Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Do. Today we continue to work on our card slash colony survival hybrid game called Hand of Life. Now last time we spent time learning a few things, primarily the sometimes uncertain nature of programming. We managed to figure out an issue with sending information across entities, toyed with balancing for a bit, and learned GameMaker's camera is uh, still a bit of a mystery for me. And today we continue to bid on those additions by first adding a class system to our game for colonists. And for now this class system will just decide on how they interact with resources. Then we'll also start work on a potential menu system for resources and building. Now that's a lot to get through, so let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. First, we have to say goodbye to our Slenderman astronaut in favor of something more obvious to color. So I made an outline version of our colonist sprite. It's now colored white so that I can tie class types to colors so we can easily distinguish between said classes. And in case it needs clarification, classes of course refers to their jobs such as woodman, miner, etc. Now that we had our class types added for our colonists, we had to add restrictions to what they could gather. I tried a simple conditional check between resource type and class type, but I soon realized that it was a lot more complicated than that. So I added a buffer to the code to loop through a simple check. If the type matches the class, then harvest. If not, find another nearby resource and repeat. I then change the instance check from nearest to random. I want the colonists to focus on one resource at a time, instead of getting distracted by other nearby resources that may pop up. And weirdly enough, by randomizing the check I can both nail down a singular resource and have it also match the colonist class. We'll have to tweak this more in the future, but for now it did exactly what I hoped. Colonists only gather resources that their class would gather. Next, I wanted to set up a temporary way for us to see our current stock of gathered resources. So I set up a toggle that would display when the player hovered over the shrine, and a simple loop that would display the data from our resource data grid. And speaking of grids, I then created a new grid for tools, and a master list script for tool names. And for the time being, I just added wood and stone axes to the list. Now it was time to begin work on the menu system, starting with the build menu. Creating a new object, I added a bunch of variables that would allow us to modify properties of the menu dynamically. And though I'm not entirely sure what the final thing will look like, I started drawing the basics. Since I don't intend on the game requiring Twitch reflexes, I thought a page system would work for building, so players could flip between buildings and tools, which I was able to set up through a mixture of arrays and variables. Things were looking promising so far. Next came the most mundane part, setting up the hotspots for mouse interactivity. Long story short, I set up clickable hotspots for the arrows to allow us to shift pages. It didn't work at first, but that was simply because I kept checking for the wrong variable. Yes, I'm already getting confused with the amount of variables needed to pull this off, and it's only going to get more complicated from here. I then added a building master list to the game, and included just scores and tempos for now. Next, I had to draw the list into the menu, and display the proper list for each menu. Originally, I tried to go with a single general loop, but then I realized it wouldn't work that way due to the whole array system I'd been working with thus far. So instead, I went with a switch that would determine which array is displayed, which itself would be based off the current menu page. And finally, I had tab toggle the menu, though really I destroy the menu when not in use since I'm pretty sure loading so many scripts and arrays would take its toll eventually. And there we had it, the start to our colonist class slash job system, and the beginnings of our menu system. Though it may not seem like much, these were pretty big steps forward in progress, which should make the next few episodes pretty interesting. But for now, that'll do it for this session and this episode of Let's Dev. So remember that if you like this video or enjoy Let's Dev in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And as always, be sure to leave your thoughts on our progress in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.